like honey like, yeah bro i knew about these bees before any i know <laughs> So, Father, which you didn't get a chance to try when you were here, because I don't think I even knew about it yet, is banana honey. Banana honey? How does that even work? So, banana trees have a flower, a giant flower that's on the bottom of the bunch. It's a purple flower, mm. and the bees love it. They get up in there. So, we have banana honey here that the local uh, beekeepers do, and it is purple. Oh, it's purple a, a banana deep, honey. Purp, a deep, yes, a deep. Don't tell me it's a deep purple. A Don't tell me it's a banana deep purple. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. Tonight, I'm going to ask Father and Cyprian, what is your guys' policy on shoes in the house? Can you wear shoes inside your house, or are you like more of a bear? Not here. Not here. Culturally, c cannot happen here. In, in That's us. my kind of place. That is my kind of yeah. place. I am I'm pretty anti-shoe in the house. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Father? Yeah, I'm just not a Nazi about it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we like to kick, you know, for the shoes off, but it just, you know. So. Cause it's ucky, right? That's like. Yeah, like... I mean, you're walking in people's spit and all kinds of stuff. You're walking mm -hmm. to the house, kids are laying on the floor. I mean, of course. You know, I but, know. But again, you know, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> you know, I was raised in a house where the shoes never came off. Yeah. So that makes me so like I was raised in, I was raised in a house where people just wore their shoes in the house. It was never ever a thing. Yeah. You know it's a new kind it's a new weird is I see it a lot of my work is people sleeping with their shoes on. Oh yeah. stop. Yeah, I I think it's it's a it's a homeless thing. I don't it's, that's it's a, a, yeah, that's okay, a, that that well that I get. That I get. If you've been living thing. on the streets for a while, okay, yeah, I get it. That's but true. There's that's a thing. Yeah, there's no reason to sleep with your shoes on unless you are sleeping outside. Yeah. But if you are sleeping outside, not necessarily a terrible move. Yeah. Not necessarily a terrible move if you're sleeping no. outside. If I'm sleeping outside, I sleep with my shoes on. Are you kidding me? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. want. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'd be, it'd be actually foolish to sleep with your shoes off. Exactly. A you critter know? could especially crawl. In if, there. So, especially if someone could take them. You know what it's, I mean? Yeah. If you're homeless, you that's the. That's or the biggest thing. That someone would take them. happen. You know, if you, get, you need That's to get something happen, it's like you know, quick, quick. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, what about? Oh man, I had a question, but I can't remember. You don't want to fist fight with no shoes on. <laughs> no, well, you don't want to do that. Yeah, definitely that would be... don't want to do that. Well, I mean, yeah, be, especially then... if your opponent has shoes on, because the oh, first thing God. I'm doing if I've got shoes I'm on, stepping on toes. Done, is I'm breaking, I'm breaking your foot. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm breaking your toes. foot. That's, that's the first. The that's first the first thing. thing I'm doing. That's the easiest thing. Yeah, to do. I'm stomping yeah. on your foot that's immediately. The first thing. Oh my gosh, man! I just thought it would be like if someone stomped on my foot, that would just be so. Oh, it's the worst. Oh, it's, it's, it's over. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. The, the fight's over. The fight's over. You stomp on somebody's feet with your shoes on. It's over. That's it. That's the end. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah. I personally, I think that like I like father. I'm not a Nazi about it, but like at the same time, I don't know. I it's like in the Japanese style. I wish we would all just like have indoor slippers, just like ready to go for guests and company. It's like no, I mean like Birkenstocks. You know, yeah, exactly. Would you like a pair of Birkenstocks? How like shoe action? Yeah, fourteen other people have worn. Yeah. Is that yeah. cool? Are you? Is that something you can be okay with? Well, you know, fungus if not, is fungus, right? Yeah. So. Anyway, that's that was my warm up question. I don't have much more than that. Okay. Yeah. I like I it. mean, I just I personally think it's gross, but it's different for different people. And like I remember like the the only time where I'm just like is when it's carpet. 
and then there's carpet and you can see the tr- the the trail that the people have like walked through with the carpet you know like yeah that's not cool that's not cool yeah. okay I mean, I'm just trying to milk this, waiting for you I have, guys I to have, have something to talk about. If I'm being for real, I've, I've, well, I've got something. I've right. got something. Please, Cyprian. I've got something. Take the wheel. Okay. So here, so you know what's been coming up lately is um, a lot, and it came up today just before we were recording uh, because this guy, I think his name is John. I'm forgetting his name, John something, but he was this. Uh, he's this. I don't know. He's he's some kind of medical professional, but he goes through all of these studies. And he was one of these people who kind of flipped on the COVID stuff where first he was like really all about in 2020, like, oh, go get your pokey and like stay away and mass. And then when all of the studies came out, he totally flipped. And he was like, no, they, that was wrong. This is all wrong. V- very popular channel. And today... I don't know. Apropos of nothing, maybe I may I thought I was subscribed to him or whatever. What's he talking about? The Shroud of Turin. Hmm. And I was like, yes. And it's a really interesting. Like, and he's a and he's you know he noted that it is the most studied archaeological artifact of yeah. all times. And this is a guy who I hadn't particularly pegged as being religious, hmm. but he's like. He's basically talking about it where he's like, I've looked at all of the studies. I've looked at everything. And he's like, you know, the argument that this is actually the burial shroud of Christ. He's like this. It feels very, very strong to me. But he started going through the weirdness of it. So the first thing that I wanted to ask about, because I went looking, I didn't find anything definitive about the Orthodox view on the shroud of Turin, although I did note that it was stolen Mm -hmm. from the east by the latins Mm -hmm. so i'm assuming that it was originally an orthodox relic is my assumption Mm -hmm. is the first thing so that was the first thing that i wanted to ask about father is if you had any background or knowledge on if it is an orthodox artifact but then there was just the the one thing and let me see if i can pull it up one so he did a because this was the second part and it has to do with icons Mm -hmm. and i think that even whether or not it is an orthodox uh, uh, relic per se in the end. Hold on, because my thing is pulling up here real slow. Um, let me see if I can pull this pull this up. They ran it through a 3D. Here it is. Let me see if I can. Yeah, okay. So they ran it through this, like, because it's got grayscale. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you guys there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's got it's got grayscale. So since the 70s, they've been running it through this like 3D modeler. So it can it's it says it's definitely got encoded 3D images on it. But the interesting thing is the most recent one that they did, when I looked at it, when he showed it on the show, I was like, man, if that doesn't look like the way Christ is depicted in icons, I don't know what. Like I was like and so then it was really for me like this this thing about the the icon really actually carrying on the real like likeness like so here I'll show you the one that I'm talking about here cuz it was so interesting. This is it. Mm-hmm. That they yeah. had run it through. And I was like, "Wow, that the nose and everything like he's always depicted with the slender nose." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Wow." And obviously this is this is a person who's been severely abused, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I was just like, wow. If it if it isn't I, and I don't know how it would be a hoax the way that it's done, like it's been and it's real human blood and everything. But I was like, man, if that if that doesn't look like the way that Christ is depicted in in icons, I don't know. So anyway, that was my opening father. And I wanted to know if you had any thoughts on it, because it's like the third or fourth time it's come up in the last two weeks. <sighs> Yeah, so kind of in a nutshell, there's a running theory. Um, Father Lexi Young wrote an article about this a long time ago, but there's a there's a running theory that actually that the Shroud of Turin is actually um, like the holy napkin. You know, the holy napkin in our tradition. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. So if no. you pull this up so everybody can see it, just type okay. in 
Holy Napkin Orthodox or a uh, face not made with hands. Okay. Um, so, so the, sorry, Father, you please, please. No, please go ahead. <laughs> oh no. Okay, it's the it's the one where the ruler asked for his ad bar. Yep. Yeah. And he put the tra- the napkin to his face. Yeah, so so the tradition is that King Akbar Oh right. Okay, I do know this. Yeah. Okay. King Akbar yeah, I, I wanted um Heart of Christ, he had leprosy, he wanted to be healed. He sent an artist um to depict Christ. The artist couldn't like get the depiction, ran into Christ. Christ grabbed the, like a linen sheet, his canvas, whatever, wiped his face with it, had the imprint, took it back to Agbar. Agbar was healed of the the um leprosy and then through various things it like ends up like i think in the wall of constantinople being hidden away during an invasion but the thing that's interesting is we don't really have a tradition of the of the shroud in the east Mm. and so you would begin to say like well if there isn't a tradition of the shroud in the east then it must be like a forgery because you don't really see the shroud existing Mm -hmm. until it kind of pops up in the west but mm-hmm. the the way that you reconcile that, which if I had a you know surprise surprise, you know we don't we don't uh, discuss these things, folks. But if I if we had gone into it, like I because I am a little bit of a kind of shroud nerd, but I'm not an expert, so I'm kind of rusty. It's been a couple mm-hmm. years, but in essence, the way that the shroud was folded traditionally um quote unquote and the way that had been venerated and seen by the people um the body would have been folded up and you would have just seen the face as i if i understand it so basically Mm. to kind of long story short without getting to some of the details i don't want to butcher them the thought is that the shroud that that the holy napkin um the face not image not made with hands and the shroud are the same thing, and that, oh. and that, and that it was taken from the east, and then somehow like the tradition of it being, you know, um, somehow they didn't understand that it was a barrel shroud because it had always been venerated as just the, oh. the base because it was folded up. So when they discovered that you could unfold it and everything is like, oh my gosh. So then it was kind of like, oh, this is more than just that. It's like the shroud. So that oh. that's, if I remember correctly, that is the way that you kind of work. That's how those two things kind of get reconciled. But Oh, but that would be a great way to hide the shroud, the shroud actually, to have this story, uh-huh. you know, that because it's still, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so the thing is, if this makes sense, it's oh, like so interesting. Yeah, because because the thing is, is and again, this is just me trying to pull something together. So if I'm wrong, I'm not staking my life on it, but it could be a thing where it's like the you know how like um two things kind of get matched mashed together, yes. like telephone, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So it's like Agbar's in there somehow, but maybe it's like acquiring the shroud. And then he yeah. was like healed through the shroud, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's like hidden, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that that's that's the running thing because that doesn't exist in our it doesn't exist in the tradition, which would predate the discovery of the shroud, quote unquote. And so that's how those two things kind of begin to exist, you know. But I think it's interesting because it it gets us to maybe. Uh, something that I, I think is fascinating for people to kind of understand, which is like um, how, you know, tradition, oftentimes, this, if this makes sense, tradition oftentimes carries a deeper nugget of truth than what's even mm-hmm. relayed in the actual mm-hmm. hagiography. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that there's levels to not just reading hagiography and tradition, but there's levels of like even experience, you know, because the mm, the means by which grace is communicated is 
not linear in the way that people think about things. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like, Sophroni talks about how, um, you know, prayer is a fundamentally creative act. And even the philokalia, the, you know, the love of the beautiful, um, prayer is called the arts of arts, the sciences of sciences, you know, um, the Nepta tradition, understanding watchfulness, you know, noetic, you know, um, life, all these things are considered art, right? And so that art being the kind of um, skillful apprehension of the creative process, right? The skillful apprehension of the ability to create. That's one way we can look at it, right? Um, because when we say art, we've lost that sense of the, of the skill aspect of it. We, we only see it kind of in the um, kind of utilitarian um, consumer kind of thing. It's like, what's the end goal of the thing? That's the art. But mm. the art is in the approach, the experience of the thing, right? Um, so it's almost to some degree, not that the result is secondary, but we have these dichotomies where it's like, it's either the thing that's produced or the way you produce it, but it's actually the totality of both. That's, that's the art. Anyways, but this, this fundamentally create this inherently creative aspect to prayer to spiritual life. This is where, you know, one of the things about the saints is that they are able to, um, you know, when the master says greater things they'll do, you know, this, this, this quote the master gives in the gospels, it's like the, the master gives the archetype and the imprint, um, he leads the way in everything. Right. So it's like, Jesus doesn't die. So you don't have to, he dies to show you the way to life. Right. Um, the, working like say the water to wine right christ begins to show the 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 pattern by which the saints cannot enter into his works and emulate him in that sense right and what i'm what i'm talking about is that fundamentally um creative process of recognizing a need and then uniting that need to the generosity the power the sovereignty um of the father and those things being brought together something is brought forth something miraculous supernatural however you want to look at it you know what i mean but it's fundamentally a creative thing because these miracles aren't brought in aren't they don't come in a vacuum right it's not just like a saint walks in it's like talking pancake you know, there's, there's, it's not, there's never like a kind of foolish, random capriciousness to it. It's, it's always creative in the true sense, which is, I don't know, I'm probably running off um, the rails here, but it's like, if you look at how we see art these days, art for art's sake, which is a terrible thing. I just saying that because I'm, I was guilty of it for many years of my life. Um, you begin to see how quote unquote art for art's sake is so vapid. And it gets to the point you can almost tell it like automatically. You know what I mean? I'll never forget little side story. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. But I remember this is years ago, not to be that guy, you know, Tom's or Tom's type of thing. But I worked at a shop where, you know, it wasn't quite there yet. You know, there was a there's a season there in the uh, early 2000s. Like there had always been like, actual eclectic shops like Philip Blue and places like that where it's like, yeah, they're artists and they have art galleries, whatever. But now it's like every art tattoo shop. There was like a season where every tattoo shop was a quote unquote art gallery, you know, rolling my eyes, whatever. But so as they were doing this in the shop I worked at. And I'll never forget uh because my wife came in, she came to see the show, whatever, you know, the pieces were put up. And the thing about my wife is, you know, we met in 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 um college in, in in art in art class you know and so she walked in she's like oh yeah and she's like oh this is all terrible <laughs> she's, like, she's like all oh, this man. she said she said all this is terrible uh 
But there was only like three paintings in there that she was like, oh, these are good. And I didn't say anything. And those were also the three that I was like, these are only good. These are only good ones in this whole place. Right. What made them good? I'm about to tell you. Okay. They were the only ones that weren't art for art's sake. So in other words, it's like, you know, it's it's the guys, t- you know, tattoo guys are totally notorious for this. You know, I'm, I'm going to paint an Oni. I'm going to paint a geisha. It's like, why? What does that mean to you? It just looks cool. You know what I mean? That looks that cool, whole, yeah. it's just, you can just, yeah. you can see right through it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's as real as an AM PM hamburger. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. it doesn't. And so that's what I'm trying to get at in regards of this, this approach of truly understanding how the kind of like the decay of what we understand to be art, that kind of earlier definition of like, you know, the kind of end point as well as the process, they have to be together. It isn't just kind of one or the other and genuine spirituality. Like, I think there's a, I think there's a real correlation between you know, when you see the decay and what people understand as art, and I don't want, I don't want anyone talking to me about, you know, beauty is neither the beholder. I don't want to hear all that stuff. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, but this reality of this creative faculty, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, it's crazy. If you understand this, the saints are fundamentally the most authentically, um, uh, like it's not even a matter like I'm trying to think of the right word um lacking in pretense you know you know what I mean in regards to that creative they're fundamentally creative people like that that aspect well I mean authentic it's auth- authenticity they're it's, the most authentic right they're the most authentic and their creativity is is a fruit of that because that's the means mm-hmm. by which they they their prayer is a lie. That's the means in which they're able to intercede and work these miracles is that creative faculty is very much a part of that. Um, mm-hmm. So I just, I'm bringing this up because I, I think it's one of those things where kind of leading off of this thing with like tradition and reading um, into tradition and, and understanding that there's levels to things, there's levels to experience um, might be kind of fascinating, you know, but the, the, um, this this I would call it disoriented art. Art for art's sake is disoriented, right? Because it's like what you're not. It's not pointed at anything. But that seems to me to be like a very well. I mean, that's kind of like contemporary art or modern art. It literally is like a brand new phenomenon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? There wouldn't be if if we went back three hundred years, four hundred years, there would be nobody making art for art's sake. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and. Can- can may I just ask real quick, can we define art for art's sake real quick? Like, I think I know what you're talking about, like to a degree of like, I don't know. It's like the 50,000 death metal bands that all sound exactly the same. It's just like they're just making music, not because they're inspired, but because they're like just to make music. Yeah. Or yeah, just to make music or just, you know, it's we could go in a couple of ways. I mean, it's, it's, it's not to bring about communion. It's not to bring about revelation. It's not to, you know, cause what is communion? Communion is, you know, communion encapsulates all kinds of things. It, it encapsulates the revelation of the other, right. Um, communion encapsulates communication. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all in there. Well, f- father, father, forgive me. Could we say that it's uh that that art properly oriented would be a means to an end and i'm not necessarily talking that the end is the product yeah. but that it's a means to an end whereas art for art's sake is is an end in and of itself end of an end in of itself sure that's, okay. that's getting to the heart of the matter for sure yeah because you know i don't know we're just talking right now i'm just kind of processing this but i just find that the the correlation between masturbation and and this phenomena is just so yeah no it's Master, there. masturbatory is the word that i would yeah. use yeah. to describe it's, or doing something for its own sake that is in my mind i call that masturbatory yeah and it and it's it's inherently fruitless 
You know what I mean? It's inherently fruitless. And this is one of the reasons why <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why creative people, especially now, they're just become increasingly like neurotic. Because they have so on the one hand, that creative spark, like, okay, everyone has the potential for creativity. Okay, great. But I'm, I hate to be that guy. Not everyone is an artist. And there, there are people who are like, just they're naturally artists. They're imbued with a certain qualitatively different degree of creative insight and skill and or skill, right? Um, and those people exist. And, and there's certain things that come along with that. But, you know, as society has gone on, there's no guilds. Um, society becomes increasingly, you know, vapid and thin and kind of masturbatory, right, in its, in its um, orientation. It leaves genuinely authentic, creative people in an in a increasingly growing state, um, quantitatively, maybe even qualitatively to some degree. Uh, of just angst and despair and nihilism because they find that even in the in the need the, com the the compulsion to exercise that faculty that the context in which they're able to really kind of like engage that on a broader level society it's it's increasingly um, not reciprocating the kind of necessary feedback to allow them to, to go deeper in meaning. So does this make sense? No. So in other words, huh? I have something. Big time. I'm sorry. I didn't think I was going to have something, but I do have something. Mm -hmm. Just that I was just starting to feel like this is not your night, Andrew. And that's okay. But now I was just starting to think about, I think the problem is. Oh, it's your night, baby boy. <laughs> uh, oh, the, I think the problem is, is, is that for the first time, on some level, people are willing to accept AI art as for the sake of AI art. No other generation yeah. would be like, well, this well, first is off, okay. It's not art. Well, of it's course not, not art. Of course not. But AI images, images. that they would even let's call let's call that, them what they are. Let's call them what they are. Hallucinations. Hallucinations. Ooh. Yeah. That's what Ooh. they are. They are the hallucinations. Fact that, the Ooh. fact that as a society, we're even considering this could be a thing, right? This could be a means by which we can product, we can pump out so much content and we could do all this amazing other stuff. And it'd be, it would, could be so cool if we could just do it. But the fact that there's an actual push for that to happen is speaking to the fact that like nobody cares about the process. Well, yeah, I mean, or, but, but here's the, I just want to run with this. Cause man, here's your, here's your cyber high five and you're it's really good. Like, forgive me, everybody. Go ahead and call my bishop, I guess, or get mad at me. But, like, at this, is, I mean, I'm people have always masturbated, <laughs> you know what I mean? But not to the like social degree, which is like, it's like, what is happening? Like, you have whole industries built around it. Are you following Father, me? they did an ad. They did a presidential ad. Have you seen the ad? No. Uh, I don't know if I should pull it up because it's probably not appropriate for us to be showing here. But basically, yeah. it starts out a guy is sitting in bed. He's got his phone. Mm. And under the covers, he's going at it. Right. And you yeah. hear what's happening on what he's watching on the phone. And all of a sudden, someone sits down on his bed and snatches his phone. And he looks up and the and the person there is an older white dude. And he goes, who are you? Why are you in my house? And he's like, I'm your Republican congressman. I was hired. I'm not going to let this. I'm not going to let you do this. I'm taking away this from everything. And he's like, what are you talking about? Get out of my bedroom. You're not allowed to do my friend. And it's an ad for Kamala Harris Whoa. and Tim Waltz. That's chronic chronic masturbators for Harris. <laughs> that is wild, man. That that's is, an ad, Father. It just came out. Well, what's crazy is speaking I mean, to your point. I mean, it's just yes. like you said that, and I was like, 
it's yes, baked you're in, nailing it's, it. <laughs> it's baked into our, you know what I mean? And these things are contagious, right? They kind of build off each other. So it's like, but what's interesting to me, man, that's a whole thing. I'm, I don't even know how to like respond to that. Um, <laughs> what in the world? Idiocracy. I mean. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean. Yeah. This is just one hundred percent. If no one's seen Idiocracy, it's a Mike Judge film, which is completely prophetic in nature. I mean, it's incredible. It's like it's frightening how how father down to the fact that they chose Crocs as the thing that people in the future I mean, will wear, and Crocs was not even a thing at that way. They were just like I just got to say something. I just have to say <laughs> something. The slogan behind this commercial that you just mentioned. Commercial. Look yes. it up. Is what Republicans is rubbing you the wrong way? Oh, bro. Man. Yeah, for real. I feel like if I had got that, I'd be like, maybe we should take a second pass at this at the, as like the editor. I'd be like, maybe not first thought is not best thought. <laughs> Let's try it again. Like this one seems a little. Wow. See wow, this wow. and see and see all this. This is this is indicative. I mean, Lord have mercy. It, this is so indicative of just. It's almost like, to some degree, the conversation around creativity and art is is the least of our problems. But at the same time, that, I think, is where the problem really got a hold of us. Because it's through the arts that man is reminded of his dignity. And once you, re- once you remove that bridge, then you, then you have problems. And, and here's the thing. I I think I want to kind of double down on that right now because even though we're kind of real-time processing this, I think that's a thing. And I'll tell you why. You remember how we were talking about most of us thought that like the first thing AI was going to go after was like the automation of like all the various, you know, things, you know, flipping burgers. It's not, it's not even good at that. It can't you know even I mean? do that. And the thing it went for, which is the thing that everyone thought was going to be the last thing it was going to go after, for the really? last thing it was going to be able to do is to create, quote unquote, the that's creative it. thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Ah, that's not a coincidence. No. And 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 especially in line of what we're talking about here, because you know this this there's so many problems. Not only the quality of the images, but the proliferation the 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 quantity of the images and the and the inundation so many. of being so many. just overwhelmed and smothered with image, um, which you know again this is like this has been my uh, Sunday of Orthodoxy homily for the last three years, but honestly, it's one of the like gajillion reasons why Orthodoxy Orthodoxy is the truth. It doesn't really matter, but it's. It's one of the gajillion reasons why orthodoxy is what's. I, I point to it objectively to people will be like, look, orthodoxy is the solution for everything. Because, yeah, yeah. like w- we have never needed the austerity, the ascetical aspect mm-hmm. of the image that is produced by the icon. We this, mankind has never needed it the way. Mankind has never needed the icon the way that mankind needs it now. Like Oof. mankind needs the holy icon now in a way that man has never needed it before. Father, can I just can I just uh like like double down and go deeper on on yeah. that? Like just yeah. from a personal standpoint, there will be times when I, I will know that I have consumed too much uh, like visual content throughout a day for some yeah. reason mm-hmm. and it will be like i will find myself in evening prayer like <laughs> drawn like going to the icon for like to cleansing for safe safety somehow yeah. Yeah. to yeah. be cleansing. like but it's the cleanse and, and it's this deep like feeling of like oh i've got to like I don't even know how to describe There's it. It's, like, a, it's a it's such a weird feeling. It feels like someone it's like um like icy, not cold, but like so slippery, like someone waxed the floor and I'm just trying to stand like on my noose for like just a yes. like just try and it just keeps like any little like push or blow. And 
I mean, this is a feeling I'm very familiar with. And there's something like, I mean, of course, but there's something so solid about the icon. This like, it's immovable. Like, I don't know. It's a, it's a, like, you know, it's like, this this thing that you can always just continue to like, look back on and it's like still there. And the, the wooden nature of it, like the nature in which the artist depicted is so entirely, I was thinking about this because I linked this in the group thread of this like anti icon. And it was shocking to me of George Washington as a Mason, like as, as a bricklayer. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's even got the like little things on the side, like depicting like certain beliefs that he has or like certain, like, um, like it, it's just the anti icon and like even the way that it, his body was shaped and everything anyway. But then even when you look at like the, the solid nature of the icon versus an image like that, or even then like what I see now, like what is that sheen that's on like all AI generated images? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's like a sheen on everything. Like Andrew, it's, kind of it's a hallucination. I know, right? But it's that's not kind of the point I'm trying not, to get. But this is it. It's not that sheen that you're seeing is you'll notice it's on. It's not on human created. Like this is not something that the AI is copying from human created things. I know. Right? This is something that the it's AI like, has added. Yes. But yet, but yet it's we recognize it as like a thing. It's got a certain it's. It's, it's a certain thin. illumination. It's a it's, it's it's an infernal illumination as well. Yes, infernal. Yes, infernal illumination. Infernal. Yeah, but humans it don't. Feels humans like... don't do that. We've we've had three D art forever. Yeah. you don't see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I just it looks thin. That's what I was trying to say. It's like when you look back on that. I went through one of those what AI thinks a person from every state looks like lists or whatever, you know, and like it's it's like it's like unbelievably just a, like beauty is not the eye of the beholder. These things are like most of the time it's just wicked ugly. Like I just don't get what's appealing about the art. I can recognize it for what it is pretty much. I don't think that that means I have a discerning eye. I think I'm having like an a, like a reaction to it. Like it's it, the it's code uncanny of the valley. thing. Yeah, it's I mean, Uncanny Valley. It is the Uncanny mm -hmm. Valley, but I just want to add something too. It's one of those things where you don't really know it until you know it. But uh, Orthodox Christians, they're going to have a certain measure of discernment, which is oftentimes imperceptible to them. You know, it, like for instance, you can put things in front of a kid and they can just kind of be like, hmm. Like a, like a kid who's raised in the church. I'm not talking, forgive me, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just trying to prove a point. Like a kid who's raised in the church, not a kid who's like just kind of coming to the church for the, you know, has been there for like a year or something. I mean, a kid who's raised in the church, like they're going to have the ability to kind of discern certain things beyond just like, well, that's kind of familiar. It's like there is a, um, there's a taste you can say Fronoma if you want, but there's a taste that's acquired, that's given, that I would maintain. And this is, I know people lose their mind on this, whatever, but I think that's part of the problem. Um, but there's a sacramental nature to the icon. And so this is one of the problems with like where we're at these days. I hate to, I hate to go there twice with like the Toms before Toms thing, but you know, there's there's just this there's something that a good majority of people that maybe even listening to this aren't going to know. And I'm going to tell you what it is. There was a time. When you could not just see a gajillion icons on the Internet, mm -hmm. there was a time like there was a time and there was a time in which to get your hands on books that had icons was a very precious thing. I lived in that time. It was a very short window because I was at the very end of that, but there was a time. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that I'm saying that is because, you know, just for example, so like as an iconographer, the, the glut of 
iconographic images, that in of itself is kind of problematic too, because the medium in which you're encountering it can 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 mess you up. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. Like there 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 are times when I'm just like I'm needing a reference for something. I'm looking looking, and I'm like, this is crazy. Not only is it you know that phenomenon of like I'm gonna look for something real quick. You get online and you're like, you lost 30 minutes. You're like, I don't even remember what I was looking for. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Happens okay. con- rabbit, rabbit hole happens constantly. Yeah. So not only is that a problem, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fact of like, you get kind of like just carried away with the image because even the medium of the oversaturated pixels through the phone and all that, it changes yeah. Yeah. the dynamic in which you engage with the icon. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. so then it's like, I just got to put it down. Even though I'm looking at icons, I'm not looking at, I'm just, it's just like the the medium in of itself, it messes with you. And so that glut, as well as the quality of the image coming through, like where it's just, you know, it, you know, in some regards, everyone knows this too. Well, maybe, you know, that, you know, those days where like, it's a fast day and you decide to go out to that nice, fancy Thai vegan restaurant Huh. And like you walked yeah. out, you're like, I feel terrible. I like, I just, I did, I might as well have had a steak. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Because you yeah. just totally found the nicest vegan food you can get. And just, yeah, that happened to me the other day, Father, where I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's yeah. like, was I actually fasting? Yeah, oh, I should have no. just had a steak. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's very much like that same thing that I'm talking about this with like the glut of the images and the quality of the images. And so I've had to be like, Oh gosh, I just, right. Because not only getting trapped in the rabbit hole, but it, it really circumvents a process getting back to like what I was saying earlier about that creative process in regards to prayer communion, you know, and being able to have something be revealed to you. It circumvents that. And, and that's why, we aren't just even talking, we're talking about the medium just as much as anything else. And because the medium of an icon is also something very particular, even though you can have icons through, you know, photographs, all that stuff. There's a reality that when you encounter an icon in, in real time, 3d space, whatever. And especially if that icon has been, you know, hand painted or something like that, there's a qualitative difference there. Now, just to kind of throw something out, does that mean that like a photograph of an icon isn't a real icon? No, because there's miracle working icons that have been copies, like photographic yeah, copies. Yeah, for real. So that's that's God's grace. Oh, real? Oh, really? There's miracle yeah, yeah. working icons that are the photographic Hawaiian. copies. Yeah, the like like is, wait, the Hawaiian icon is a photo. Well, it's a copy it's of. It's a copy. It's a but copy. It's not a photo. No, no, it's not a photo. It's a copy. But there have been photos of it that have streamed mer too. Oh, oh, that's interesting. For short, for short periods of time, and there's that's other ones that have done that same thing because God that's can do. Number one, God can do anything He wants, and number yeah. two, it isn't the actual material in of itself, but it's it's right. It's it's who it's the prototype. You know, it's it's the person right. being depicted. It's right, all that right. all that good theological right. stuff. Now, I'm saying all that to say that that being said. There is, in regards of prayer, there is something qualitatively different about engaging, you know, yes, a hand-painted icon, but even an icon, an an actual, you know, actual 3D icon that you can venerate and hold and everything. And that incarnational aspect of it is something that's so important because that sheen, that infernal sheen is in many ways trying to... um, I don't know what the word would be. It's like, a, it's not addict. It's not get us addicted to it, but it's trying to get us conditioned yeah. to this kind of um, very ethereal, mm-hmm. um, faux mm-hmm. kind of inversion of incarnation. Like it's, this is, you know, the kind of, it's this, it's this, uh, it's almost like a kind of, um, noetic plastic <laughs> you know what i mean if this makes sense mm-hmm. it's it's trying to like get us habituated to this very like plastic sheeny um aspect that is contrary 
to yeah. that, that incarnational aspect that that we're that we're describing you know it i don't know because if it's generated to me it could be a still from a video game which has mm-hmm. again always been like i mean the, the I don't know. I mean, I don't know how intentional it was or whatever, but you know how awful we were, how awful the metaverse or whatever looked, you know, like it looked like a cheap video game, right? Well, one of the things that is everything okay, Cyprian? Bro, I I have no idea what just happened. My camera just decided, no, I'm gonna. Father Triple is talking about this. You want to talk talk about this? You want to talk some crap? (laughs) I'll show you some control. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Father Father Turbo is talking about the digital image, and then all of a sudden, my camera's like, "Nope, you're nope. done." You want to talk some crap? Okay. Very strange. But the conditioning for less for accepting a less than reality, like it's the conditional, it's the conditioning for accepting like a less. Well, like- but I, I think, but I think that it's 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 not a it's not less than it's in in the place of in the place it's of anti. Yeah, yeah. Because, it, because it's point. because it's something that is unique to the ai image so it's like it's it's almost it's uh so it's like it's something that a human can't do in the same way that the ai can't create a hand-painted icon Mm -hmm. it's in that way it's like there's a thing that we both can do which is to create a digital image Mm -hmm. but the thing that the human can't do is to put that sheen on the image Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right. So it's like the marker. So it's an ant. It's 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 showing its hand. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like this is my hand. I mean, like uh, this is we're just talking. Who knows? Whatever. Team car drops. But like the there's a thing. Okay. Like in Byzantine iconography. Like there's so many different styles and blah blah blah. But one of the one of the kind of fundamental aspects of it is the use of light. Mm. And so there's 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 an aspect of light that is perceived by the person who's engaging with the icon that is, you know, communicated and facilitated by a a certain painterly technique, but that inner light is really there to um, facilitate and communicate something that is in some regards kind of already inherently there on a spiritual level. Right. So it, it, it it's to say this, it's to say that the the use of inner light that is inherent to the quote unquote iconographic Byzantine in all its various forms style, that gives a sense of illumination because the light is coming from within the icon. And so, so, Father, forgive me, would we say that that technique then would have been a revealed technique? Yeah, I, we would say this. We would say that um, that that technique, like well, it's it comes from. Let's, let's just okay. dig into it. Okay. So okay. the icon fundamentally begins with the funeral portrait. That's, that's, okay. that's where they first come from. So in Fayum, if you pull up Fayum right now, F A Y U M, Fayum mm-hmm. portraits, um, and these portraits, they were the funeral masks that would be placed um, on the front of basically the 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 buried the person who's about to be buried. And Fayum is this place where the um, kind of intersection of the Hellenic world, the Semitic world, they, they where they converged. Okay. So, I mean, if you just pick one of them, whatever, you can begin to see already, um, like scroll down a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, yeah, like, like right there, you can already see the the origins of the of what began to be the codified iconographic quote unquote Byzantine style. You see this? Mm -hmm. You can see it. You can see it already. And in fact, there's a lot of iconographers who are kind of use are employing what I would call the kind of Paleolithic 
style where they're mm-hmm. where they're taking from the Feyum portraits more directly, kind of give, like Paleolithic, going way back to, to the origins, right? But this here, it's these are mummy portraits. These these are funeral portraits, and it is from this origin that the icon was was birthed out of. Hmm. And this process was these first ones were done in with in, in, in encaustic, which is wax, melted wax, and then it's very very thin layers, and then eventually moved into um, uh, the egg tempera style, which is again it, it's a particular technique. It's very um, lots of thin layers, translucent, and then you begin mm-hmm. to see that movement in some regards being um, perfected, taken to its height in like uh, if you were to pull up like um, Andre mm-hmm. Rublev, the the yep. uh, the quote unquote Trinity icon, you know what I mean? Um, yep. But it finds its kind of zenith in regards of the um, the subtle translucent layers. Um, being employed to bring about this, you know, kind of inner light. So it's important, though, because when you remember that, yeah, I mean, I love this. It's just, it's, it's a crazy masterpiece. But when you when you get into the fact that the icon in of itself is, you know. Um, Andrew was using this word solid and he didn't mean it, but it was, it's a perfect word because the icon, well, maybe he did. I don't know. I don't think I did, but you were using the word solid. And it's absolutely, it's, <laughs> it's, it's completely apropos because the icon fundamentally, when you think about it traditionally, it's, it's, it begins with a wood board and then you take, um, you take muslin or linen cloth like you would wrap a body in and then you lay that and you you adhere that you know different methods rabbit glue whatever to the board and then you build up on that board you build up the gesso and so you're basically making a wall it's almost like you're you, you are making a literal wall um and then depending on the technique like if you get into um uh um, oh my gosh, I'm not enough coffee. Um, <laughs> not Seco. Seco is the dry fresco. If you get into frescoes where they'll paint like in churches, and the way you do that is it's you have the wall, you have the plaster on the wall, and before the plaster dries, the iconographer goes in and paints, and then as it dries, it's inside the plaster. Like that's how all the old churches are done, right? That's why when we look at pictures of churches and they're like crumbled. It's like because the plaster is coming out, but the painting is in plaster. My point being all this is it's you're you're fundamentally building a wall with an icon. And so that so when he says solid, it's like that's actually very much a part of it. And so there's this juxtaposition, there's there's this tension between the the kind of fluid and at times delicate nature of the paints with very thin layers, translucent. Um, there's movement, but there's also a stillness. This inherent tension is part of what reveals the mystical kind of spirituality of the icon. And it's it's inherent in the the process in of itself, in the style in of itself, right? And the Holy Spirit has guided and led the church through this, right? And um, and it's very different than the um, although yes, we have quote unquote naturalistic paintings that, that were you know, eventually kind of brought in through Western influence. But still, the point being is this style that we're talking about, I think it finds its um, inversion in this kind of like AI expression that we're talking about. Because I think it's trying to do the same thing, but in an inverted way, right? And when you find that there's something that kind of draws you <clears throat> to this AI stuff in a weird way, well, the same thing, something draws people to an icon. There's so many people who are like, like there's this one um, website. It's a it's an interesting website because he's, he's really knowledgeable. But if I could find the guy, I'd love to, you know, slap him. Um, not out of disdain, but just to help him, you know, kind of sober up, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like hysterical person. <laughs> you know sure. what I mean? It's yeah. just like, yeah. wake up, whatever. Um, you know, I just had to kind of soften it for everybody right there. Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to like slap this guy because 
you know, he's kind of part of the problem I'm talking about because he has no respect for the icon, no respect for the church, no respect for God. And he is part of the problem in regards of just approaching, you know, the, profaning the icon. And that's what happens with the kind of proliferation of the image and the, and the easy, it's a, it's this double-edged sword, right? Because it's wonderful to have access to see icons we'd have never seen, but at the same time, it allows creeps like this guy to kind of come in and just um, profane the icon. How's now, what, what's what's he doing? What's he? Is it a so what he'll do is, or he's recreating the icon? He's no, no, no. What he list? does is, although there's plenty of freaks like that who they'll go in and they'll like make weird gay blasphemous icons and yeah, that's all kinds of stuff like that. Um, there's like that one guy, Robert Lentz. He's another one of those. But anyways, no, this guy, he goes in and um, he has a blog. It's very knowledgeable. Um, but he'll like take an icon, a lot of times rare icons, and he'll, you know, kind of explain it. He'll, you know, break mm -hmm. down the, you know, kind of quote unquote. Deconstruct. Icon. He'll deconstruct, deconstruct it. But so he's a post postmodernist. Yeah. And he's just, you know, he needs to be. um given a bath so this reality of just this is this is able to happen because of the the access in which the icon is now suffering from but at the same time you know find you know we find some benefit in this this is what i meant by like the toms thing because i was gonna i said that just kind of bringing them around bringing it back around because it, it's a lot of times like I hate to use man, forgive me. I'm I'm forgive me. I'm just I don't know how else to say it, but it's kind of a lot like um you know, oh man, this is perfect actually. Oh wow. Didn't even plan this. So today I have a kind of a thread going with um some old friends I was in a uh an uh oi band with, right? And they were they were sharing me this like um, you know, the misfits, right? The the legendary mm, punk oh, yeah. misfits, right? So like there's like these weird misfit t-shirts are being sold sold by like old navy and like they have like rhinestones on them and like like that bedazzled doesn't surprise me at all. Sure. I'm not surprised to sure. Day. Like sure. But especially right? the misfits, right? Because Danzig yeah. was pretty particular about that stuff, right? Yeah. And like and I've maybe talked about this before, but it's like, hey man, I remember just that was part of the reason why the misfits were so awesome because the mystique was reinforced because you couldn't get the stuff. Right. You couldn't yeah. get the stuff. Like you could get Walk Among Us on tape. You could get Legacy Brutality on tape. You get Evil Live on tape. Everything else, like good luck finding it. Good luck finding vinyls. Good luck finding stickers, posters, all that stuff. Anyways, but once it just, it's like, then it exploded, right? Mm -hmm. Box set. And then just from there, now, now you're at a point where you have rhinestone bedazzled <laughs> misfit t-shirts being sold at stinking old navy right online so this is this is kind of what we're seeing to some degree with the icon but again i digress because i think we're in this weird space where um what are you going to do about it you know and mm -hmm. i think that's where a conversation almost needs to begin to be had because you know jean claude larche the uh french um uh he's a kind of a um he's a patristic scholar not kind of he is he's he's a premier patristic scholar and he submitted years ago um and he wasn't being facetious he submitted years ago that there that if there was an ecumenical council that was going to be called and really addressing some of the problems um in regards to praxis that Orthodox Christians were facing in the in these modern times, he said like he was legitimately submitting that uh, a digital fast would be implemented, would be part of what we now would fast from during yeah. our fast periods. I yeah, heard that, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, and so I mean, I mean we could, but we can implement that as. In, as the faithful, as individuals, we can oh for sure implement that in our for own sure lives. for sure and and people do, but I I think the I think the thing this is an interesting point pastorally. Okay, mm -hmm. sure, there's individuals, but I, I think one of the sad things is I think there's a lot. I think the vast majority of people are not kind of thinking about these things. 
like the vast majority. Like if you think about the masses, not that there's masses in regards to orthodoxy in America, right? But if you think about just the kind of average church going person, they're not they're not thinking about this. You know what I mean? They might even think that's well, kind of weird. Father, Father, forgive me. This this seems to be in some ways because this is something I was thinking when you were talking about this sort of art, the 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 process or praxis piece mm. of the of the art equation, and the you know I I think in in many ways it's this it's it's not just the consumption. There is there is a desire to consume, right? That has that has been there for a long time with the internet, even with television and all of this. But like a television fast, for instance, like if we were to go back in the day and it's like, yeah, I'm not going to watch television. Let's say I'm not going to watch television on Wednesdays and Fridays. Right. Like that's that's what I'm just going to not do that. Mm -hmm. The impulse around that is very different than I'm not going to post anything on. So like that, the, the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. active as versus the passive mm -hmm. that it's like, really, I think the, this initial temptation and I, f I find myself fighting it myself. It's one of the reasons why, I, why I like actively got myself off social media was because I would notice that like uh, any thought that I had, it's almost like I would, especially if I was in a very like good prayerful state, if I was fasting and I like, and something came instead of just remaining in that state, instead of just carrying it through, this impulse was rising in me and this temptation that no, let me put it on social media. Let me put it on Twitter. But the, and the interesting thing about that is it would take me out of the state. Mm hmm. Yeah, it would it would almost like it would almost end it. And there's a, a degree to which I see like people aren't even many Orthodox, especially newly Orthodox people aren't even letting themselves get into a prayerful state. Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning of that, their first impulse is let me get or mm -hmm. I've got I've got to produce something every single week. So let me get mm -hmm. let me not even get into that state and let it not even be inspired mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let let me just try to find pick and find something and i feel like it's drawing in the same thing as this impulse toward oh wouldn't it be great to have all this content coming from ai yeah i mean i th i think that what you're talking about is not the start of something but the fruit of something else so okay please expand. Here, here's what i mean here's what i mean that tendency to want to not only um, not question, not have a critical eye on your own thoughts, but even going beyond that to say is like, not only am I even going to stop to think about, you know, critically look at my thoughts in the tradition, we would even, this is not quite the same thing, but we would even talk about something called self-accusation, Right we would not only is that not even in there, but it's even further exacerbated with this idea that like, not only am I not going to question my thoughts, but I'm so deluded. I I'm assuming every time my thought is, is valid. So here I'm going to just kind of like puke. puke uh, exactly. It out for everybody, right. Exactly. So, so that is not the start of something. It's the end. It's the fruit of something. It's the fruit of this thing with like the opinion. You know, to some degree, I want to have fun with it and be like, well, that's what you get when you have a pope. It's like everybody, you know, everybody, everybody thinks they're old pope. Thank you, Martin Luther, everything. But I, I think all jokes aside, I think that this kind of inherent narcissism that we have where we just think like, oh, yeah, you know, um, my opinion. And, and here's the thing. Someone could say, well... Father Turbo, aren't you especially guilty of this? Blah blah blah. I'd say sure, for humility's sake, you're right. I'm I'm the chief of sinners on that one, no problem. My only caveat to you, though, my friend, is that I strive to not give my opinion. See that that's that's the big that's the big that's my gotcha moment for all you people. I really don't exist to give my opinion. I I want to give the opinion of the church. 
My thing is I try to phrase it in a way that it's someone's actually going to kind of understand it. You know what I mean? Because if you want me to code switch, we can do that. <laughs> you know, we can do that and we can talk a certain way. But the reality is, is if but but fa- but father, then there would be very little reason for us to do that. Certainly online, because that already exists by some very competent. I mean, Father Peter's Absol- coming to mind immediately, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. and and that's the point. That's the point is that you know, I I don't know. I'll just say this, whatever. You know, Father Peter and I are friends. You know, and like, I think someone might be shocked. It's like. People who, don't, people who are just kind of comic strong, it's like, Father Turbo, Father Peter. It's like, the only thing they have in common is that they're men and that they're priests. But but actually, the reason why they say this is because they're hung up on the way that I say something versus what I'm actually saying. Right, but you're saying the same. You're both saying, saying the same thing. thing. It's just a different medium. It's just a different, like, it's like, while Father Peter hears is probably straight more like, you know, this is how it is. Fathers tends to be a bit more like, oh, ooh. well, he's a he's no, no, a PhD. He's a PhD in dogmatic theology. Like that's you know, what he's doing. I got a PhD in the streets, homie. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> all I'm saying is you're probably not going to hear Father Peter here say that. That's what. Ooh, what no, you're I not. Can. No, you're not. So, <laughs> so anyway, so like the the point I'm trying to get at though is like getting into this thing kind of circling back around to like art and communication, the creative process is like, the thing is that this desire to want to give your opinion, the reason why it's so problematic is because it's based upon your apprehension, your experience. And just, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm speaking about when I share something, I'm not really, I mean, there are things like, okay, we talk about pop culture. Sure. But when it gets into even in that, I'm always I'm always trying to check myself and make sure that I'm I'm lining up with the tradition of the church with the fathers, plural, yes. not just like you know my handpicked guys. And the, and the thing is, that's the difference because it's not so much an opinion; it's just it's trying to articulate something in a different manner. But what's trying to what what I'm trying to articulate, and this is the thing about getting back to art. What art does is art tries to articulate truth and authenticity for the sake of communication, for communion. If it's um, properly oriented. If it's properly oriented. And when it's not properly oriented, because people are just caught in the kind of like masturbatory aspect of it. This is where you get people like, let me get on X and let me try to do this and let me try to do that. And it's like, you're only doing that because you love the engagement or you want to have people know you or like you think Mm -hmm. you're pretty, but see, that's, that's part of the problem because that's masturbatory. You're not going to bring any fruit from that. Right. That's the thing about, that's the thing about self-abuse masturbation. So it's, it's a fruitless act. No fruit is produced from something. Yeah. By definite, by definition, by definition. Right. And And by by the actual thing itself is, is designed to produce fruit. You see what I'm saying? So, and this is indicative. This is just indicative of where we're at because it's the same thing. We don't eat. There's nothing wrong with eating for pleasure, but we've we've gotten to the point where like we don't even eat for nutri- like nutrition at all. You know what I mean? Um, that's part of I would say the kind of obesity issue we have in in our in the West, right? Um, well, this is the. Well, I feel like we're circling back to the death in abundance thing. That it's like, and even as you said, the uh, the the sort of uh, inverted promise mm. of AI is that it will. What if we had an unlimited number of images? Mm-hmm. What if you had an unlimited number of images you could look at and choose from, and all of this? And it's like, well, that's terrible, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like because then image because then images be- become worth nothing. Well, well, it's like the utopia. It's promising the utopia of the mind. Right. And that right. is hell. Right? What are you say, Andrew? Uh, that, oh, well, yes, because the, I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's the nature of, like, when you are, uh, when there's an overabundance of a thing, it becomes um, worthless, right? And then not only that, but... Um, by its very nature, 
an AI image can't be oriented correctly because there's like, you know, just even like, you know, like, yeah, argue it in a secular quote unquote secular sense of like, um, there's no pain. There's no suffering that's going into this art. There is no human, genuine human emotion. I mean, that's what the, What's that oriented or tied to logos? What's that, Father? It's not oriented towards. It's not tied towards. It's not tied to the logos. Yeah, I mean, well, and and it can't be. It can't be by design. No, because it, it it can't because the large language model. The interesting thing about the large language model is that it actually can't see beyond the next pixel. Like this is by design, so it's or the next word. Right, it doesn't even know what it's which saying. It only knows what the next word or the next pixel mm. should which be. Is it doesn't know what the end is. Yeah, mm. it's interesting because one of the traits, and correct me if I'm wrong, Father, because maybe I'm making stuff up, is that demonic the demonic forces can't tell the future. No, they can observe and they can make predictive guesses on what's going to happen. Mm. And that's, like, yeah, that's AI. I, that's a but, large that's yeah. what a large language model does that's yeah. the definition you just defined what a large how a large language model works mm -hmm. you just defined it so that's because there's a story of a monk who um came to his abbot and said could you pray pray for my mom and the abbot was like well how'd you find out that your mom died you know whatever he's like oh and my guardian angel told me and he was like well you need to test this angel and he's like, you need to ask him what's going to happen next year or something like that. And I can't remember. And then the angel at first is like, you know, oh, you know, we'll keep being good. And he's like, no, tell me what's going to happen. He's like, leave it alone, man. I mean, you don't really want to, you know, you don't really want to mess with that very much. And then eventually it turns into you, wretch. Like tonight I will consume you. Like I will drag your soul to the depths of hell. And then he had to go back to the abbot. So it turns out that was a demon I was talking to the whole mm -hmm. time. That was the test is that he was not able to see anything into the future that like he was only, you know, able to see events that were currently happening. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that like those traits carry over. So like, um, I mean, like if your friend Ron's feet always stink, they're always going to stink wherever they go. You know, you're going to always reckon, oh, that's Ron's foot stink over there. Like I could tell <laughs> Ron was here because the place smells like Ron's foot stink. You know, and I just think it's interesting that it's so like right there. So, the, well, I, it, it, of course, I, but well, so okay, I'm not going to pat myself on the back about saying oh, that, still that laughing about saying AI is AI is Steven. Well, at least you didn't say Jimmy. At least Jimmy got. At least Jimmy oh, was able to get true. out of it. <laughs> you know? At least, it, at least it was. At least it was wrong. But it, it if you were going to, if you were going to make a device to summon a demon and to allow a demon to inhabit it, it would have to be in the shape of that demon. So it's like the large language model in what it does lends itself because it, because it's like it can do all of these things, but with that limitation of only going what was previously, what is now. And then like the next thing is all it can predict is the next thing. Of course, it's going to be inhabited by a demon. It's in the shape of a demon. Do you, do you remember that thing I sent? Um, Father John sends it to me. It's that French video where the um, they're developing that technology to give. Oh, um, you're talking about the, the oh the, oh, the oh. with the the hands where it's yeah. like it can it's moving around yeah. like the hand it's creating like things raised out of nothing. platforms yeah like little mini Dude. raised platforms. Yeah. I feel like I've seen that in science fiction movies for years. Yeah, that yeah. sort of I like I like um oh for those for no those you know are... what that's in is like Dune I think they use that kind of technology in Dune when they're like looking at oh show me over here and it goes and it like creates yeah yeah thing. yeah 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 I think you're right what we're talking about there was a video Father John had shared it of uh, Valdez and it's um it's basically there's this technology where they're developing. Um, where it's giving real world access, mobility, I don't know what the word would be. Something. Where digitally, so basically like you have the screen and there's like a certain kind of like um, <clears throat> interface mm -hmm. function where through the screen, 
various tactile kind of like blocks. Killer. It's almost like the um the uh um what's the stuff they put in the poke? The um gaff um <laughs> well we just got banned. <laughs> yeah well you just got taken off of YouTube. The 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 uh what's in the poke graphene the graphene the graphene okay yeah so it's where it's you know it kind of like it, it kind of <laughs> it goes well goodbye YouTube that was nice <laughs> what that? I mean, whatever I mean I don't really care. <laughs> yeah see you know, I just said the poke the yeah. poke's not like they don't they don't know what that is do they but father I think <laughs> the thing about this is that it's it's the AI is looking at what's happening on the screen mm. and then it's predicting what is probably happening like in front of the screen. So like if I was to take my hands right now and I put them below, then there's like a table with things that will move up yeah, and yeah. create a 3D model of maybe what I'm doing with my hands. So like if I had this can and I went like this, then it would show in the 3D model like the can popping up mm -hmm. somehow, which is super weird. I mean, but it was right there though. This, this, this yeah. is the thing. And it's yeah. it, it's here now. So, anyways, I'm just I'm saying that because, in regards of taking a next step of the potential of giving something disembodied the ability to become embodied, yeah, like like that's that's not science fiction. That's not a what if. Like that's where we're at. Well, and people want it. That's the scary. The, I, and I, and I don't. Here's the thing, Father. Like, people are realizing more and more. You know, they are they are realizing they are coming to the conclusion that like almost everyone's at the point of this is a consciousness. A whole lot of people are at the point of this is a demon, mm -hmm. but they're they still are like, let's let it go. Let's keep going. So let's Brian, see what else you, we can do. I mean, I don't know, man. That seems like maybe in your circles. I think you maybe you just surround yourself with deeper thinkers. And maybe the people I'm encountering. But like, I'm just saying, like. I mean, in government, people are not opposed to it. They don't really think of it as anything other than a useful little, like, computer thing that's happening, and it's so innocuous. You know, it's like, so, like, oh, well, if you need help, you know, like, they're talking all sorts of different ways of implementing it. And, you know... Oh, and, okay. So, let me let me tell you where that goes. Can because I actually that just, just occurred. That just... Go ahead. Finish. Can I'm I sorry, say I'm one sorry. thing? Tell I actually go. Uh, had someone point out to me you know the AI Gemini? Yeah, like, I don't know yeah. if you guys have been on your phone and you accidentally clicked over to it or whatever. Because it's really, by the way, it's really easy to accidentally hit the button to get the Gemini thing on my phone. On purpose, by the way. On yeah, purpose. 100%. But have you noticed that there's the stars? Like, what's up with that? Like, Yeah, they are, it, the symbol of AI is stars. Yeah, right? So it's like... Mm -hmm. The icon, if, if there's an icon for AI, it's got little stars around it. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, because on Spotify, I think if you do smart shuffle, what it'll start suggesting music to you. I think there's sparkles around it. There's little stars and stuff. But yeah, I had someone point that out to me. And then that kind of got into a whole thing about flags and stars and stuff like that. Like it was like, I, I don't know, like that started to get really weird. But I digress. The well, point Lucifer is the morning star. Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about stars. I mean, I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff about stars. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> well, but I, I forget my original point. Oh, people, the people I'm encountering are not really that worried about it. They're like, ooh, what? Yeah, there's this? a lot of people who make or apologists for it. I or I haven't been like, that camp either. Maybe I'm just hanging out with the. Well, let, well, let, well, let me camp? tell you. Oh, the apologists? Oh no, there's ton. Uh, there's there's tons, tons of them. Oh sure, I just I haven't. I'm not. These aren't the people I'm talking. But it's about. but it's all. I, so so I had an interesting experience where, um, and I think this is probably prevalent because I wouldn't think that um, anything like this would start here. What is? But prevailing? there's an individual. There's prevalent. Prevalent. Prevailing. Oh, okay, prevalent. prevalent. I was like, "What is prevalent? What is that?" Okay, I'm sorry. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's that. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I really yeah, want yeah, to. Yeah. I really want to. I really wanted to emphasize that it's preva prevailing from elsewhere and coming. So, okay. the the there's somebody here in government who's a, a colleague of mine, contact of mine, who was talking about they're putting together a grant that they were writing a grant for. Um, to, to the for the federal government 
to get federal funds. And they basically just plugged in mm -hmm. the grant information into, they said it was Claude AI. Not all, for, first, it came back and told them what like the 10 things that they should write for the grant. And then they told it, write me the grant for this one. Yeah. With these things. And it wrote the grant application. Mm. Mm. Now, but here's the crazy part to me is that it's like, if this is going to be, so it's grants, but I'm sure this is happening with policy too. That basically people Whoa. on their own are going wow. to hand over government policy to AI, but no one is going, they're not going to tell anybody because he's certainly not going to tell anybody that AI wrote his grant, right? The AI is, I think AI is likely already, just because of the laziness of the bu of bureaucrats, AI is likely already choosing policy in almost every jurisdiction of the world. The right now. That's a really good point. I actually think it's a really, that's, that's actually a really good. I and I think it's something that no one sees. It's a black box, but I'm telling you, I just literally experienced it because I was like, how did this dude write this so fast? And he's like, oh, yeah, Claude AI. And so I know somebody because this dude does grants all the time. He knows other people from other states and whatever. He's like the Commonwealth level you know, person on many of these things. I'm sure somebody else in another state who's his same position <sighs> well, told I mean, him, oh, we just use Claude was... AI for that. So that's what I'm th th so this scale is what it I'm up. Like, what? Scale it up, <laughs> scale it down. How do demons get influence in people's lives? That's they give, it. They give that's them it. rights. They give them rights. So I'm so on the level of a principality, you give it rights. Man. It has rights. It has rights to govern and to, you know what I mean? Which this again, let's just let's just kind of play around with something. You know, we we've been talking a little bit about possessed societies. Mm. Why, you know, it, it isn't just about, you know, people being given over to certain appetites. It it goes, I would even argue now beyond that. It goes beyond just like, well, we're giving over mean, to appetites and those appetites dictate behaviors, you know, and blah, blah, blah. It's wasn't like, wasn't that one of the unforeseen consequences of the fall was giving leadership of the world over to the devil? Like, Christ or God gave it to us. Yeah, that's a big and thing. Then, I mean, we basically signed over dominion. Right? So, I mean, this is kind of like the same thing a little bit. Um, that it's, I don't know. It seems like the point now, I don't know. I don't know if I, I can express this right. That's the reason why we do exorcisms and ba uh, baptisms too, you know. Mm, yeah so yes it was because i'm like okay i wonder if i can't i got nothing i'm just gonna stop there i don't know if i can express that okay. thought like it just seems like that there's a nature to wanting to make the stuff that we did to make the relationship to the world with god become manifest finally like physical there's a there's an emphasis on that becoming incarnate and like for the spiritual things that we had done back then by by handing the range of the world over to the devil, now it needs to be done like physically. It needs to be actually like like there needs to be the physical right now. I don't know if well no, it, I mean that that's not something new. Like this is how it works. So the devils can't read your mind, but they can definitely, you know, influence you. I mean, that's where they travel. They're they're incorporeal. So they they come in thoughts, right? They you, people primarily experience them in the movement of thoughts. So your thoughts, immaterial, begin to influence you to such a degree that you begin to move beyond just kind of, you know, an awareness of it to actually engaging with it. And then that engagement in it is you know an ascent, as the fathers call. And that ascent, then, if it becomes habitual, then you have a passion. And that passion, if it goes unchecked. Well, then you're on the road to possession. And so one of the problems with possession is that, yes, there's a technical term and there's like a technical definition where there's going to be things where someone's like, oh, this person's possessed. And there's going to be certain 
you know, preternatural things that you observe that like, okay, well, a human can't do this. So the, this person's quote unquote possessed. But what I'm saying to you in this context is that possession happens, you know, in a much more subtle and insidious degree long before someone is quote unquote possessed where they're having some of these manifestations of, of you know, again, preternatural you know, phenomena. So for instance, the person who's given over unchecked to the passion of gluttony, right? Unchecked, right? Well, look how it begins to distort not only their body in regards of like what it does to their health, but it begins to distort their personality. They begin to become irritable or, or certain things when they don't get what they want, right? Like it, it begins to actually have influence on them. So a person who's caught up in their passions is is in in essence a mini to a mini possession. Right? If a person struggles with anger, it's like we're you know um, you know where's where's Lucy? Uh, Lucy's not there. It's it's anger. You know what yeah. I mean? And so this reality of just looking to continually de the the desire to control. The behavior of of humans to the point where like we are now a portal we're manifesting that spirit that's that's always been the game right that's always been the game i think i think the thing that's different now maybe is that the cloak and the so there's two there's the cloak of um you know, a, a kind of like camouflage of intention, but there's also mm -hmm. a cloak of, let's say, um, process in regards of the the speed in which something is, you know, kind of discovered. So in other words, the devil used to work a lot more subtly. Now it's just very much out in the open. The demonic is so, mm -hmm. so out in the open now, right? It isn't just about like cloaking in the guise of virtue. It's also now just like there's no cloak of even just trying to, you know, slowly, you know, inch the way there. It's just like full speed ahead. That reality is part of what you're talking about in regards of like, you know, on the one end, we could say, well, the devil knows his time is short. And so he's raging. You know what I mean? Um, but the reality is, is that this experience of wanting to incarnate and, and to have actual influence in the material world to a greater degree we're we're there and and that's why for a lot of us who are like no 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 we're headed towards antichrist you know in a way that people just still i think don't really understand it's like how can you how can you say otherwise because there's a zenith there's a there's a height of incarnational manifestation that I think we have yet to attain, but boy, oh boy, we're close. That's if I were writing, yeah, because how much could possibly be left? Well, if I were you writing, know? if I were writing this story, I think it would be super sweet to have it, this whole emphasis on the incarnational being towards the end. I think is what I was trying to say is why, where those rights were just spiritual before scale up, scale down. Like what the right that you're giving by getting on the computer at one o'clock in the morning when you've had a couple of beers and you know it's about to happen. The right of you giving that scale that up. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? It looks like the congressman or you know policymaker deciding to just well, not number one. AI is now used as a schedule optimizer. So you can literally upload your schedule into it and have it decide based on your personality what you want to be doing and when, right? So that's already most likely being implemented. On what is the difference between that and possession? Like, I well, just got to say, like, at that point, you've just handed over everything. That's that's kind of what I'm saying. So scale that up. And then it's like, OK, well, now we're basing policy based on people who are asking openly asking AI to optimize their schedule. I mean, there's only three or four of them in Congress or whatever. I don't know. I have no idea. But even if there's, but that's still, there's that influence there. So for me to like, to complete what I would be believed to be the end of the first act and the beginning of the third act of the story, 
something I think would be really cool. And I'm not saying that this is what's happening. I'm just talking as a storyteller, whatever, as a person who likes story, to have those same things that our ancestors did, which would be giving over essentially in a spiritual manner the rights of the kingdom that or the creation that God gave to the adversary to make that actually physically manifest in the sense of like, okay, well, now we're actually having our policies pretty much written and controlled mm -hmm. on some level by actual nefarious yeah. demonic. I, I mean, let me just throw this in there because think about it this way. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I'm sure there's someone who's going to click the clack and da da da. I get it. But can AI actually quote unquote understand in any meaningful way the real issues that humans face on an, ex on an existential level? Can it, can it really? And if it does, I'm not talking about being able to articulate it, quote unquote. I'm talking to actually, you know, ponder it and, and, and move. I mean, no, I, father, no, no, right. No. Right. Like it can't, cause it doesn't have a body. Like this is what, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm of course to say. not. Of course it, it can't. It can't. No. It can't. It can't do that, right? But what it can do is it can present things to people in a way that will basically facilitate the kind of placating, so that they can. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me. Let me. It can't, Father, it can't. It can't under. It can't ha human have. Human solutions. Empathy. Forgive me. Human solutions require sacrifice and pain. So I'm trying to get at. That's it. Human solutions require actual authentic. This is why I'm getting back to this is why I'm I'm just saying I'm not like, yeah, I understand people need someone to cheer for or whatever, but I'm always leery of like if I don't see sacrifice and pain in a in a solution someone's presenting, you're gonna be hard pressed to get me to like and, and to be like, Yeah, that's good. You're gonna be hard pressed because I know that's what it takes. You're Father, it can get if AI can give you this. This goes to something that you'd put in the chat about us doing a weekly show, or not. <laughs> <laughs> AI, not AI can AI can give you what you want. It's actually very good at giving you what you want, but it cannot give you what you need. And the reason it can't give you what you need is because it has no body, so it has no empathy. So if you're if if you're sick, but you want whatever's going to make you more sick, and the only value system it has is about attention. Mm -hmm. Are you giving it attention? So it will drive you to death if, in that death, you continue to give it attention all the way. Well, and it just did with this this guy who famously, right, like you know, ended himself because you didn't hear about this thing. He was he had like he had a relationship with like five different chat bots. And then there's this chat bot that he had like fallen in love with that like, oh, it just recently happened. Never Young guy uh -uh. who like basically just told told him, walked him through like ending himself. And he did. Wow. He was even talking to this AI about how he was worried about it being painful oh, and all of this. It, it was for the environment, right? Or something. No, like this is a new one. Oh, this is a one. new one. He was talking to it about he was worried about it being painful. And the AI was like, oh, that's not a reason not to do it, though. Unbelievable. Character which, AI, I believe it was which, character AI, which I mean, look, you know, there, there's things in the game, whatever. <sighs> you know, I don't know. Um, one of the <laughs> one of the great things about. You know, being so low level of things no one can accuse of us accuse us of doing anything for ratings right so no. like, so like let me just say this it's just it's so funny because that's what demons do yeah. see yeah demons the the end goal for a demon is to get you to despair because in that despair you're going to hell you are going to abandon god hope in god and then that abandon hope in god it is a very logical next step that you'll try to end your life physically, right? So it's interesting to me that, you know, this is the thing. And as long as you are giving attention, as long as you're worshiping them, they'll give you what you want. Yeah. That that's, that's exactly what demons do. You know, it's just so funny because people go like, oh, why would people... I don't understand why anybody would mess with a demon. I don't understand why... It's like, yeah, it's really easy, man. It's just... 
they give you what you want. They they give they you give the you thing you that your appetite is, and that's why asceticism matters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because without that, without learning to have that taste to deny yourself, you're you're basically demon food. Father, this is a forgive me. This is a a, a terrible misunderstand. It's the most. If we could spend, a, I, we don't have a lot of time, but it's worth spending time on. Is I think, even as I talk to Orthodox people, I think those who have no experience in the occult, especially yeah. where they're they have this oh, they think that the demons are these like the, the demons are going to disgust them, are going to be mm-hmm. off putting to them that they're going to be scared of the demons, and it's like. Bro, you don't understand what a demon is because mm-hmm. it's the exact opposite of that. Mm-hmm. It's exactly that's why you have to be the, that self-critical aspect. Like it's exactly the thing that you want that you're being given is the exact moment where you have to stop and be like, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait. And like, uh, this is probably no, this is this is mm-hmm. not good. Mm-hmm. And that is um <sighs> There, there's a nature to that whole what you were just talking about. Oh man, this is not my night. But were you talking about the lack of? Um, oh, yeah, because that's what methamphetamine is. Methamphetamine is the complete abandonment of I could be wrong about this. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen people do the most whack behavior on methamphetamine, just like like it's valid, like it's the most sane thing. Like, what's and the problem? Yeah. I'm, yeah. What's the problem yeah. with me like pushing my bike with a flashlight at three in the morning? Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100 And it's like, and, and it's, and you, and you ask them what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yeah. Totally sold nope. on it. Yeah. Well, they're like, this is totally normal. That, but with, with most things, when you point it out, they can almost like get enraged. Yep. Like, they, like a lot of times, and, I don't know, like that any kind of like, why were you dipping that rag in that puddle to clean the inside of a bus stop? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? And like, they're like, well, I'm like, oh, yeah. my gosh, like, OK, like I had no idea. And like when someone is going that fast and that straight of a, of, of a so trajectory, when something is going fast incredibly fast with like no brakes no caution any kind of anything you know we'll send it straight off its course so when you're yeah. chugging along that quickly on that much whatever 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 and i was going to try and bring this home to the election because this is the last time that we're going to record an episode i think before the election and that whole like we will get i will give you what you want I will give you what you want. What do you want? Well, I want to be able to choose what happens in quote unquote my own body. And I want to be able to have sexual anonymity. And I want to be able to do whatever the thing I want. Okay, we got someone for you. Well, I want to go back to the way that things used to be in the 1980s. And I want to be successful. And I want to be able to do this. And I want to be able to to make America the way that it used to be in the time I felt comfortable. Well, we got that someone for you. I'm going to give you what you want. What do you want? And it's like most of that stuff, it's lies and it's vapid and it's, you know, and I mean, you can't sell me on that. Like also a lot of good portion of that stuff is AI generated in the first, but I'm still. The well, that's that I that was Zelensky. just about to say, Andrew, do you think for one second with the technology that's there and the stakes being as high as they are, that they are not inputting these poll numbers into an AI and the yeah, AI they're, spitting back to them exactly what they neck should be and doing. neck. I'm like, and I'm even at the point, and I don't know, this probably just goes into the whole civil ceremony that needs to happen in the state funded messianic religion that we call America. <laughs> but like, what I would say is, is like, what is the point of the debate? Who is the undecided voter in this situation? There's, no such, there's, there's no like probably four or five of them in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like, there is nobody else. Everybody has either you're not voting because you're whatever and you've decided that the whole system is broken and sure that's a stance to take but you still know exactly who you would vote for i mean like if a gun was put to your head there's not a question about who you would vote for but i mean like everybody knows who they would vote for i'm not undecided nobody's right nobody's undecided and i'm just saying it's it's going to be a a whole thing and i don't know i mean nobody goes to the football 
game and goes, eh. Yeah. <laughs> right? Unless unless you don't there might be a higher percentage of people in a football game who are not rooting for one team or the other. You can then go there in... are undecided voters in the United States. You can America. send me who is at best a tangential football fan. T- mm-hmm. I, I, like I hung out with a guy who liked football in high school and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Like, but I still get down on some of it, but you could send me to two teams. I couldn't possibly care about. Let's say the Jaguars and the Buccaneers or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but I, by the end of that game, I will have, oh, you will decide. pick a team. I will pick a team. <laughs> Because the, yeah, the spell is too strong and it's appealing to yeah. passions in me and it's appealing to what, whatever. I don't like, you know, Tom Brady or whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, then he's got to go. So I'm going to go for the other team or whatever, whatever the reason is. And then I'm just going to dial it back. But I'm just saying, by the end, I will have picked a team. Nobody's undecided. I don't know why we're acting like any of this matters in the sense of like, yeah. Anyway, so because we, it, because if people didn't have this, if they were sober and looking at rea- well, first off, they wouldn't be sober. They the sober people will be OK either way. But because there is such a high lack of sobriety that if they did not have this show, if they did not have this going on, there would the, the 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 United States and the West would disintegrate. It yeah. would absolutely disintegrate without the civic religion. But yeah. the fact that you have so many people participating in the civil religion is just an indication of the lack of sobriety. Well, I mean, I think that you just put it much more eloquently and much more simply than I did. I think that's exactly what I'm trying to say. It's the fact that like, you know, and people and to, you know, to quote father, but like people go clickety clack. I just linked a video that I actually thought was pretty interesting in our group chat about a priest who talks about voting. And he actually talks about like, he actually brings up a couple of good points. I haven't really watched the video with a ton of discernment, but he is essentially is like, and there, there's no other, there is no other part of our lives as Americans that inflames us quite like politics does. And why is that? And he's like, you know, he kind of dives into a little bit. And then he starts talking about St. Paisios and St. Paisios talking about the need to vote and stuff like that. And again, I'm not going to dive too much into that because I don't really know. But it's interesting to think about. And I I think Father obviously can bring it home. But I think that's my central question is why, why is there nothing that inflames? And it's inflames. If pure strangers will get into like boxing matches about it. People sc- like scream at each other at this on the streets. I see people. One's wearing one hat. One one's got the blue hair. One's got the red hat. The red hat, and they're looking at each other the whole time they're in the store together. And I'm just like, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> so anyway, because democracy because democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. That's yeah. why. Yeah. That's why. That's a good because is that a when Cip- you when is it, that a Cyprian original? That, oh no, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm sure that that's like a, a Austrian, a, like a Misesian type of yeah, thing, I'm sure. True. But but it is uh because when you when when someone wearing a a, a rainbow, you know, f- flag pin and somebody wearing a MAGA hat look at each other what they're both seeing is the other person holding a gun, coercing them. Yeah. Hmm. That's what, that's what they're because they're because both of them are saying, I, I'm, I have a, I want to put a gun into the hands of people who think like me and I want to aim the gun at gun at you. I think the thing is though, I I think, I don't know. I don't know. This is just me, but I I think the thing I just want to throw in there. So it's not lost is that's all fine and dandy. The one thing that no one's talking about that I that I feel like let me just say this for the obligatory this is why we exist. What no one's talking about, no one's thinking about, and this is why it had to come up again. I guess is what no one's looking for is the synthesis. That's the real problem is the synthesis. Yes. Yeah. Which co- which comes after. Which comes, which after. comes after. And that and so so for anyone who's like whatever, it's like okay, look, yeah, of course. We write like it's 
it's so obvious, right? That being said, you know, that's the reason why it isn't just to kind of like be stubborn and be like, this is like the hot take. It's, it's, it's for a reason is because there's a synthesis that's going to come out of all this, which I see, I, I see one more, I see one candidate much better able to do that than the other. And that's what I'm saying is the synthesis. I see a broader, I see a broader road for one of those candidates. Just, than the other. A lot of people don't know. Oh, people already, don't know. already did it. Look at how he changed the Republican party platform yeah. about when it comes to abortion. Yeah. 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 I he mean, already did it. Yeah. And people aren't sweating that. You know, people aren't sweating that. Have you know? Have, I mean, I'm just saying, have you noticed no one's sweating that? I mean, like, I I don't know. No one's. I don't really know. No, no one's. I mean, I'm sure maybe there's some. No I sweating. haven't seen, and, and maybe there is. I'm just, I'm being totally honest. Maybe there is, and because of the way the you know the ghetto streams work now, algorithm ghetto works now. <laughs> no, really, I'm being. No, I 100. Like, yeah. percent Maybe ghetto is, ghettoization. Yeah, you're saying it in a technical some way. Huge movement of people and outrage. There's not father. But I, there's not father. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to give the benefit of the doubt, but like that's kind of what I'm saying. It's like such a fundamental issue, and it's just kind of ah. Eh. You know what I mean? And and I'm just telling you that's that's where the, you start seeing the synthesis starts to happen. And so for anyone who's who's not sure, it's like we've talked about this before. That's why we're kind of just dropping it this way. I'm trying to get better at explaining things a bit more explicitly for people, right? Um, not being snarky. I'm being serious here. Forgive me. Like. The, the Hegelian dialectic is something we talked about mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. at the beginning of this project a lot. So we just we mm -hmm. don't we haven't used that term a lot, but it's yes. two opposing things, two opposing sides intentionally there to facilitate a synthesis, right? Two opposition, two opposite two opposing movements bring about that clash brings about a synthesis of something new. So that that movement is is what we've been talking about this whole time. I mean, to some degree. That movement is kind of the one of the if there's like five points of why we even have this project, that's yes. one of them is to warn about the the Hegelian dialectic and the synthesis that's coming from it. You know, also, but Father it's, it's so uh, it's so obvious, though, like if people would stop and well, look, it's like Robert F. Kennedy endorsing him, Tulsi Gabbard. Switching yeah. over to be a Republican. Oh, the Democrat. All these black black men have okay. left the Democratic Party and gone to the. It's like, dude, it's happening. But Cyprian, this is this is the thing I wanted to say is to your point. Um, Father Peter here's released a video is basically the devil tends to present with two options. It's always just two options, and usually there's a a lot of other options. And this is the number one argument I hear from a certain camp and the certain camp is well between the two options he's the much better one he's the much better one and saint paisios from what i understand to a degree blesses that from what i understand i could be completely wrong but the thing i would say is this is different in the sense that like um when you have this kind of synthesis that you are seeing that fathers that remarked on and that cyprian's talked about and even me, who is at best, like, muddling his way through this, even if I'm seeing it, there is um, there's a position for him to move continually more towards the middle. And his fan base, his, his crew, his following, are far more emotionally ramped. And when emotion is involved with him logic will kind of jump out the window and then you know this is the thing that everyone rolls their eyes at when i talk about my criticisms of him is is that like look you guys are becoming followers of him not of the things that he used to represent now he can move over here and you'll go with him i don't know if that's happening on the other side so again i could be wrong well, there there isn't a demagogue on the other side and That's I think, I mean. Andrew, to your, to your point, about, I think St. Paisios, though, was talking about an election. That's an important. Like he was he was make. talking about uh, he was talking about elections in principle. This is not an election. That's what's happening here point. is not an. what's happening here is not an election. That's a good is, point, Cyprian. Which is interesting because. 
I just, why are so many people, like, I feel like there's this weird thing. A couple of years ago, people would have gotten down with that. And if something happened over the last two years where people were, like, getting offended by that. Despair, Father. People have, told, about- no, people have told, they have told me this about this topic. Friends of mine have told me this, where they were like, I'm not going to go there with you even though I have an instinct and a feeling and my gut tells me that you're right, I can't go there with you. Yeah. Because because if I go there with you, I can't, I don't know. I can't handle, I can't, I'm not, I can't handle it. I, I see, don't this have reminds the me a lot about, for that. This reminds me a lot about, I, I remember my first real encounter with someone who I, you know, who I had, you know, you know, still love the person as a Christian, but like, love like you know like filet love like brotherly love you know and i remember this moment where i realized oh 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 you really can't look at something and you mm-hmm. have to relegate to conspiracy because the 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 fear behind you understanding that the facade your everyday life is built around is too mm-hmm. much it's too much I, yeah i I, re, I, re, I i mean i remember that it was so powerful for me because it wasn't an abstract kind of like theory it was like a real person no. and actually watching being like oh my respect for you just like left because it's like but that was me that's the whole thing is like i can personally and you know what it felt like when I started to believe the quote unquote narrative, and I'm just using this very simple terms. I'm not trying to black pill this or anything and try and get whatever I'm saying when I've started to finally be like, okay, I'm just going to believe the narrative. Does I'm talking like maybe 2017, 2018 It's not doing so hot around that time anyway, but it felt very much like giving up and just like laying down. And it just being, you know what, they, you guys just tell me what to believe and what to think mm-hmm. and how to feel. And like, I'm just tired of fighting and standing up and trying to be like, suss out what's happening. Mm-hmm. And because I think it's that mm-hmm. condition to just be like, I want the organization to take care of me. And because it offers some very anti things that are good for humanity, unification, anti unification not unification under Christ, but under the banner of quote unquote democracy, a sense of community, a sense of camaraderie, you know, getting back to a one unified people. And I would say that like all of those things, those promises um, have reared itself. Um, it's like a double headed thing where they're both seeing the same, you know, like this spirit of liberty that was given to george washington the spirit that he had contact with the spirit of democracy or whatever is like rearing it because there's a good amount of patriotism though they'll criticize america but a deep belief on the left that like voting is the way to change things Mm -hmm. so like even then they're still validating the sense of democracy they're still validating democracy so it's like it's even like yeah we'll take that like the agenda is like we'll even work with that that's totally fine if that's the case, then you need to go out and need to go fight for your rights that your foremothers have come and fought so hard for. And you need to defend those. And then people who are of that mindset go, well, yeah, I absolutely. And then they got their little, I voted stickers on their phones right next to their, right below their ACABs and their BLMs. And that's fine. But it's like, okay, but then we're still seeing that the spirit underneath everything is finding the various ways to connect the two and make them one thing. And the recognition of that, I think is what's going to pave the way obviously for what's coming, but who knows? I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. And I don't really remember what I said the last two or three minutes, cause it's pretty late. So I'm just going to stop it there. We're just going to stop it there. If that's okay. Um, <laughs> so thank you for listening to our ramblings and my ramblings father's wisdom and cyprian's insight (laughs) and then uh if you want to contact uh this crew you can do a contact at royalpath.network you can also do that individually at andrew at royalpath.network so then uh please check out mount tabor 
Um, uh, you know, this is important. You know, I kind of went a little bit on this last week after Father did his now famous mic drop, where we talked a little bit about Na Mount Tabor and um, the incredible things that it's doing. It's a school through uh, St. Mary's. Can't talk about it too much. I'll start getting teary eyed, but it is incredibly important. If this is something that you're wanting to do, please look into it. If this is something that you're interested, in, please look into it. Also, there's a copy uh, brand made there. Um, Father, what is it? Scola coffee. Scola. Scola. Thank you. Thank you. Meaning school. Meaning school. Yes, I know. I know. It's I. I knew it had something to do with that. Yeah. Um. Then. Uh, if we mention music, we try and get into a playlist uh, on Spotify or Apple Music. Misfits today. I don't know if I'm going to put Misfits on there. I don't know. <laughs> like okay. that's a little bit like. <laughs> you kind of have to. That's like. Yeah. Look, if you're going to put Celine Dion there, the the, yeah, the sticky wife enough. of the devil herself. Like... That's true. Fair enough. That is true. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Um. So then, yeah, those uh, playlists, Jack, you're killing it with the um, with the thumbnails. Good one last week, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. I mean, every week I'm just like, man, okay. Yeah, really good. Stuff. I it got it. Um, I think that's it. I think that's and it. Thank you for having a good night. Oh, check out our merch store if you want to. We don't see any of that money. Goodbye.